come on. word of advice for the EOG. Now I suggest you listen up or you're not gonna pass. Bell Spar for stream is all yours. Get a good night's sleep, have a good breakfast, focus on the test, and don't talk during the test. That is a misadministration. We do not want that. Misadministration? Not, not, not want that. We do not want that for you. Okay, okay. This might be your last time dropping by, so, like Feldspar always likes to say, Keep your eye in the sky. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're gonna give you some goodbye. So, for now, now, do with Dr. Wooder giving advice for the EOG. Let's talk about reading, though. That's the time I want to spend here. What I hear from people about reading is the passages are too long and they're boring. Is that true for some of you? Yes. yes. Okay. So you have two page, three page passages that you're just reading a long, 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 long time. And then by the time you get to the end of the passage, you don't even know what it's all about. Is that true too? Yes. And then when you see the questions, then you've got to go back and read the passage, the long, long, long passage all over again in order to answer that one question. And there might be 10 questions at the end of the passage. So for every question, you've got to go back and read, read, read all over the whole passage again? Okay, that's a time waster. I have a strategy that I want you to use, and I'll talk to your, social, your, your, your uh, reading teacher, Miss Scott, and ask her to give you some practice on this. You might have been doing this all along anyway, but listen to me. Listen carefully. This will increase your reading scores. Take each paragraph. Read each paragraph, okay? Stop at the end of the first paragraph and, and, and take a note, just a word or two or a picture. Let's say the first paragraph is about uh, Johnny taking a train ride to Russia. Let's just say that. That's what the p first paragraph is about. And you can either write a, a, draw a picture of a train and, a, and Johnny in the train, or you can write Johnny tra a train ride to Russia, just train ride to Russia, a few words. The next paragraph might be about the architecture that Johnny saw when he went to Russia. You know, that lots of the government buildings were made out of circular domes instead of pitched roofs. You know, so you, that might be the information. Then you'll make a note on the side in the margins of your test book that says architecture in Russia. And the next paragraph could be about, I don't know, whatever, the uh, roadways, uh, the, yeah, the roadways in Russia or whatever it might be. But what you do is, at, in, at the end of every paragraph, you stop, you make a note, whether it's a picture or a word, that reminds you about what that paragraph was about. You do that each paragraph. When you get to the end of those two, three pages, the question, you look at the question, and so the question might be, why did Johnny want to go to Russia? You don't have to read the whole thing over. You go back to Johnny J J train ride to Russia. In that paragraph, they talk about why he was going to Russia. Does that make sense? Yes. It doesn't waste the time of reading over and over and over again. The other thing that it does is it engages you in what this paragraph, not this whole passage, what each paragraph is about. So it keeps your interest because at the end of every paragraph, you have to do something. You have to draw a picture or you have to write a note. 
It's not at the end of three pages or two pages, but at the end of every paragraph, you have to do something. And so that keeps you more active, more, you know, more engaged, because you don't have to wait two pages. The other thing is vocabulary. That's a weakness of ours. We don't walk around knowing dictionary definitions of the words that we use. We have a sense of what those words mean. We've heard the word before, and we've, we know the context in which the word is used, so therefore we have an understanding. We're not completely blindsided by the new word or by a word that we don't know the dictionary definition for. So when you read these passages, you come in contact words with words you've never seen before, okay? So how do you get an idea about what the word means. You go, you, 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 go ahead and answer it for me then. You, you, you look at the word in, within the context of the passage, okay? So uh, if you're practicing context clues right now? Yeah. yeah. All right. That is the key to a higher score in reading is that you really have, you really understand and you're not afraid to use context clues. Because a lot of times you come across the words and say, oh my God, I don't know what that is, so what am I gonna do? You know, you kind of give up, you start panicking because you never heard the word before. As opposed to, okay, yeah, I'm not familiar with that word, but let me look. Let me, let me read it out loud. Let me see what, let me read the sentence before and after and the one that it's in to give an idea, give me an idea you know, of what it might mean. That's, that's very important. One final thing, this is optional, but a lot of kids who do well on reading, read the questions first before they read the passage. You ever heard of that? Yes. Do you do that yourself? Yes. I wouldn't require that everybody does that, but it can't hurt you. Read the questions so you know where you're headed. Where is this long two-page paper going? What are they gonna ask of me when I'm, fin when I'm done reading it? So there are two good reasons to read the questions first before you read the passage. I'm not talking about trying to answer the question. Just read, just to get an idea. One is, there might be some vocabulary words in the question. You know, there might be some words in the question. Oh boy, what are they asking about? What do they want there? I don't know that word. I don't know what uh, mammography means. I don't know what, do you know what mammography means? Yeah, but I don't know what mammography means. So wow, I'm already stumped right there. But no, if you know that's a, a, a word in the question below, when you read the passage and you come in contact with mammography because it's going to be in there, you pay a little extra attention to that. Mammography, oh, that's a, the, the, the science of, 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 of studying breast cancer or, you know, breast cancer has something to do with that. See, that's what I'm telling you, you don't have dictionary. A mammogram, you know what a mammogram is? Yes. Yeah, that's a test to see if you have any lumps or any kind of problems with your breast. So mammography would be the study of the mammary glands, okay? So anyway, you, you can, uh, so another good reason to read the questions at the end is that you would underline any words in the question that you already know, hmm, I don't know what that means, so I'm gonna pay extra attention to that when I get it, in the, when it comes to me, when I read it in the passage. Hard work is what I'm getting across to you. You cannot be successful at passing the EOG if all you're doing is coming to school and sitting in class. That's not gonna get you there. If you're not going home and practicing, doing your homework, the practice problems they give you, you have to do the work on your own by yourself. When the teacher goes step by step by step through that process and you're in class, you're giving yourself a false notion that I know how to do it. That's a false notion. Because you followed along with the teacher, you understand what the teacher was saying, now you think you got it, you don't have it. You don't have it until you go home and do it by yourself. There are some online sample tests. Do you, have they told you, have, they, have you guys passed that on? You can, there's a link, you can go online and get some sample math and reading tests for your grade. Just not the 90 minutes of it, but just, you know, a few selections, a few samples. Do the sample test on the online and see how you do. If you're making 100 on the sample test, hey, I'm ready. Let's go, bring it on, I'm ready. I want it now, you know? That's the attitude and the confidence you really do need. And the way to get that confidence and have that attitude is you're practicing every day by yourself. <laughs> I'm going
Stay in school is the best, especially when you still at the desk. Take attention, you will pass the test. Don't go to sleep or take your rest. Do you want to know what will happen next? Guess you will fail the test, so don't play no mess. Don't fight, don't cheat on the EOG, or you'll wake up in the same rank in your same old seat. Oh, oh, oh. Goodbye. No misadministrations.